Welcome to Session Self Tutorials. Hello, fellow therapists. I'm Ian, a practicing psychotherapist, and I use Session Self each day in my own private practice. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at appointment reminders and how to set them up and how to troubleshoot them if you have questions. So the first place we want to go is to account settings and the communications tab. And that's where we're going to find appointment reminders. If this is toggled on, appointment reminders are on. If you want to turn it off, you just click this and turn them off. You want to select the default reminders. And so these will be the default reminders that are available on an appointment. We're going to do email and text. The options are email, text, email, and text, email, and phone. Phone is just going to be an automated voice call. Most people like email and text. The email settings tab, this is your template for the reminder that will go out via email. When you see the percent sign and the squiggly lines, these are variables. So don't change those because what that's going to do is it's going to fill in the client's first name in this appointment reminder. Same with these. This is going to fill in your practice name. This one, even though there's a line break here, this is a variable and that's going to fill in the appointment time and the appointment location is going to get filled in here. There's other variables. And so if you want to see, these are all the variables that are available. You can insert appointment location, appointment time, client first name, client full name, practice name, practice phone number, practitioner name. Any of that's going to get filled in. If you want to preview what this is going to look like, you can click the preview. And so this is showing you if it's an in-person session, it's going to look like this. So this is pulling in the practice name, the time. This address comes from the organization settings. So since it's in-person, it's pulling in based upon the, the in-person office setting that you have set up for your account. If it's telehealth for practice location, we then reference your telehealth link or what you've pasted in the URL field of the appointment. And so we automatically send a different reminder if it's in person or telehealth. And that's based upon your location settings. So for that, you would go to account settings and your service locations telehealth, you want to make sure you're using a telehealth place of service code. And for in person, you're just going to use the office code. And then when the reminder goes out, it's going to automatically change the appointment location based upon where is this appointment scheduled telehealth or in person. So let's go back to communications. This is just a default one day ahead of time. That's what's automatically going to show up on a new appointment. You can override any of this. This is just uh, what, what will initially appear. If you want to include an ICS attachment to the email reminders, you can do that too. If you don't, just uncheck it. Same thing for text settings. Whatever goes out in a text, this is the template for that. You can also preview it. And we recommend making your text appointment reminders shorter because it's a different medium and people prefer more brief texts. So keep that in mind. So that, that's all you have to do to set up your account for appointment reminders. But now let's look at an actual appointment. When we create an appointment, let's go to next week. 
we're going to select our person. We can see this is telehealth. The URL from our telehealth setting automatically was populated here along with our instructions. And then our reminders defaults got set up here. We can change this. We can say, you know, currently we support a maximum of five reminders, four emails and one text. And text messages are included in your plan. So there's no additional cost for text, but we do limit it to one text per appointment. But now we can say, I want to send one email two weeks ahead of time, one email one week ahead of time, one email three days ahead of time, one email two days ahead of time. And then I want to send a text message, I'm going to say 12 hours before the appointment. You can set this up however it works for you and for your clients. If this is a recurring appointment, these are autumn, these reminders will get saved and this is what they will be on every appointment. So we can click save. And now if we want to see the status of our appointment reminders, all we have to do is click the appointment and on the pop-up, you'll see this appointment reminders section and you can see here's our schedule this is the status none of these have been sent yet because it's not time except the one that was a week before it's going to go out shortly because we've already hit that threshold so that one's going to get sent we'll come back to this and we'll see that the status has been updated but first i want to take a look at another scenario. So let's go to, I'm gonna go another week out. And this time I'm gonna schedule a couple. Set up the basics of the appointment. Maybe that's a little pricey, so we'll make it $100. Okay, so for someone who hasn't configured their appointment preferences, you can see we can't send appointment reminders because they haven't completed their intake and they haven't set up any preferences whether or not we can send them reminders. So let's go ahead and save this, but then we're going to come back to it. So let's go to clients and we're going to go to the Smith couple and we are going to go ahead and set they can receive appointment reminders. We can go to, if we want to double check anyone's preferences, we can just go to their details and look at their contact preferences. And so this person, yep, we can email them. They're enabled. Text and call is okay, and that's enabled. Clients can change this on the client portal. And so our system respects whatever preferences your clients have set. There was one other person on this couple. And so let's take a look at them. They say email is okay, text is okay. Let's change this just so we can see what it looks like if someone says, don't send me emails. All right, so now we have this person says no email reminders. Let's go back to that appointment. So now if I scroll down, let's add appointment reminders. We'll just add three to this one. We'll say one email week before, a text a day before, and an email three days before, and let's save it. 
So since this is a couple, now when we click on this pop-up, we can see the system automatically took what we set as appointment reminders, looked at each person and said what, what reminders are going to be sent. And we can see none of these have been sent because they're not scheduled yet. Well, what's going to happen is even though these are scheduled, when it comes time to send an email to good person, it's not going to send because it's going to look at their preferences and say, hey, good person, they don't want emails, so we didn't send an email. And I'll show you an example of that. Let's go back and see if our other email sent. Yeah. So now we can see how we can check our status. That one that we set up, you can see this appointment reminder was sent just now. And so this one went successfully. So if you, you want to see if they got sent, you just come back to the appointment reminder and you can hover over these statuses and that's going to show you whether it was sent or not. I'm going to hover over. Yeah, here's one. This one wasn't sent because this appointment was put on the calendar after the event already occurred. And so obviously we don't want to send out appointment reminders for sessions that have happened in the past. And so we check for that. But this is an example of how you can hover over the status of every reminder and, and see whether it was sent or not. We frequently get questions about, hey, how I sent appointment reminders, but my client said they didn't get them. This is how you check if if it's a if it's a red X, it didn't go out. If it's a blue check mark, it did go out. So here's one that has both. The email reminder was sent, but not the text message because there's an invalid phone number. And so we couldn't send that. That's how you check the status. If the status says that a reminder was sent, but clients are still saying that they didn't receive it, we recommend making sure that your client checks the spam folder. Appointment reminders come from sessionshealth.com. And so sometimes people just are, they're not aware that the email from sessionshealth.com was their appointment reminder. And so you want to make people aware of that as well. One last thing, just because I know this tutorial is getting, getting long, but, but appointment reminders are a very um, commonly asked questions about this particular feature. And so we want to make sure we cover all the bases. Clients can have a customized appointment reminder. And so when you come to a client's detail screen, you can see you can create a custom appointment reminder for someone. And so if you make changes to your appointment reminder template and someone says, oh, I, I'm not getting that appointment reminder, you might want to check here because maybe if you ever gave them a custom appointment reminder, the account level appointment reminder is not going to go to them. They're going to get whatever you've customized here. And you can always remove a custom appointment reminder by clicking on the three dot menu and just say, hey, remove the customized appointment reminder for this person and just use what's set up at the account level. And that'll clear that out. And keep in mind, any changes that you make to the templates those are only going to apply to new appointments. We don't go back and update appointments that have already been created. Whatever your appointment reminder template was at that time, that's what's going to be set on the appointment. And so when you change your template, that's just going to get applied to new, new appointments going forward. Well, that con concludes our appointment reminders tutorial. As always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us at support at Sessionself.
www.thinkingdeeper.com.